Hey everybody, Ramey here, and today we're going to talk about our student evaluations. You know, those things that let uh, professors get tenure, let them continue their jobs, continue teaching, things that make adjuncts get hired again. Um, they're basically your job protection as a faculty member are what your student evaluations say. They're usually called SET Students Evaluation of Teaching in the Research, S-E-T, SETs. Um, but we all know how important these things are, right? Because students are qualified to evaluate the effectiveness of a course, correct? Um, students are the customer in higher ed, is that right? Um, let's talk about some of these things. Let's pull up some of the research, see what is really out there, um, and see what these evaluations are really telling us. Um, so first of all, the research on these things is somewhat mixed in that there's some research that says these things are great. Student evaluations um, provide some really helpful information, but when you start to dig into what kind of helpful information they provide, they really recommend that they're good at providing some qualitative feedback to instructors about students' likes and dislikes. So they're really good at telling us if students liked or disliked their course and maybe what they liked or disliked. But what the research doesn't tend to find is that these evaluations are actually good at saying whether a course was good or not. It can just tell you if a student likes a course or not. So let me just give you an example of a like and dislike and how like and dislike is important, um, but not the be all end all of a course. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the military, for example. Um, if you ask a person who's going through basic training, if they like or dislike their drill instructor or the basic training, they may say, no, I hate this. You know, they're yelling at me and they're making me work out all the time and learn all this stuff and I just really don't like it. Okay, so they rate the course bad. But guess what? When they're out there in combat and they can effectively use all the things they learn in basic training, they might actually enjoy it. Let's take it to an example with sports. I ask a student, you know, a, a, a football player, um, do you like your football practices? They may hate their fo football practices, but guess what? They're winning all their games. And guess what else is interesting about that? That football coach will never be rated or evaluated based on whether his players like him or not. His players could absolutely despise him, but guess what? If he is winning games, he will be considered an awesome coach. In, for some odd reason, we've found in higher education that it doesn't matter what the students learn. What we do care about is if they like you or not. Okay, so let's get into some of this research and talk about this a little bit more. So besides some of the research that has shown that these are positive and provide some good things, which I completely agree with, there is research out there that has found um, that the more difficult a course is, the more challenging a course is, um, the more objective the grading scale is in the course, like giving tests, um, which are very objective, students, and the more rigorous a course is, students tend to rate those courses as significantly lower. In fact, they, what the research has found is, is that they tend to rate courses based on what they think their grade is gonna be in the course, and if they like the teacher or not, and other factors that have nothing to do with how much they've actually learned in the class. Okay, so that's a little confusing. You're like, well, shouldn't learning be what we're evaluating the instructor on? Like if, my, if the students learn, like let's say they are at, like when they get into the course, their prior knowledge is like 10% of what they should know. When they leave the course, it's at like 80%. So that's a 70% approval. Now I'm just making up these numbers, but maybe that's like huge and that professor should be like given a bonus of money. Um, but let's say that, um, 10 to 70% happens, but the professor really pushed the students, made them study a lot, made them do a lot of work. Guess what? That professor's student evaluations are gonna be really, really, really low. Now, let's take the same professor. Let's say the students come in, they only know 10%, um, and they leave the class only knowing 10%. Let's say they learned absolutely zero in the class. But that professor is really likable, 
threw a big pizza party at the end of the semester. And guess what? All the students are going to get A's in the class because there was a little, hardly any work. Guess what? That student, that professor is going to get awesome teaching ratings. And guess what? Guess which professor they're going to get rid of? The one that's actually doing his job, his or her job, and making the students learn. This is what's strange about higher ed. In corporate America, in uh, sports or anything, you're rated on how well you're performing. <laughs> We don't do that in higher ed. For some odd reason, we believe that performance does not matter. All we care about is if the students liked us or not. It's literally, this just boggles my mind. I can't believe that that's what we're actually doing. Like, you know what? It didn't matter that tons of people at Apple hated Steve Jobs, did it? Did it matter that his some of his employees hated him or that people didn't like his management style or whatever? Did it make a difference? No, you know why? Because if you look at Apple right now today, highest, wealthiest company in the world. That's what mattered. Does it matter if a manager, if his employees all hate him? Or does it matter that the manager is the most effective manager? I mean, obviously, yes. It, getting people to like you is, is very important. I'm not trying to argue that. But what I'm saying is we're looking at the wrong thing. I look at a sports coach. Does it matter that his team doesn't like him? What matters most? Does it matter that he's winning games? Or does it matter that the team doesn't likes him or not? Which is more important is the big question there. It's not that liking is not important. It's just that what is more important. So here's what's strange about higher ed. We don't care if the students are learning or not. We just don't care. I would say we care. We want to care. I'd say that on a personal level, faculty really do care if their students are learning or not. But as a whole in the higher ed system, any college rating a professor on student evaluations and not if the students learned or not. And it, so if they're not taking learning into that consideration, into that equation, that college does not care about learning. I mean, how can they? How can they care about learning if they're not measuring it? I mean, how can you say, yeah, we care about learning, but we're not gonna measure it and we're gonna keep faculty based on whether students like them or not, or other faculty like them, not whether they're actually teaching anything in their class. I mean, that's the message I'm getting, right? I mean, maybe I'm missing it. Maybe I'm missing the message. You tell me what the message is if it's different. Um, so then we get to this thing where it's like, well, students feel that, hey, um, I'm the customer. I should, I should be able to say whether I like the class. Unfortunately for the student, they are not the customer. You know who the customer, you know what the student is? The student is a product that I am making to send to my customer. Guess who the customer is? The customer is the company that's gonna hire this student. That is my customer, because you know why? As soon as companies stop looking for my students, I'm not gonna have a program anymore because no one's gonna wanna come. The companies are who creates the demand right now. It's not the student that creates the demand, it's the company who's gonna hire them. Because if no one's hiring from a certain program, no one's gonna go to it, why would you? Who would go to a program where you're not going to get a job out from it? I mean, that it's not going to lead to something, graduate school or a job or something important. I mean, things like this make me think like the system is so screwy. I just can't get it. I can't figure it out. So the company that hires my student is the customer. That customer doesn't care whether the student, that company that's going to hire that student, guess what they care about? Do they care if that student liked me or not? Do they care about that? No. You know what they care about? They care that I made that student learn, pushed them to their limits, showed them how to problem solve, and got them to be ready to work for that company. That's what the company cares about. That student is a product that I am building in my program. That's what students are. They're not the customer, they're the product. The company is the customer that's gonna hire the students. Um, so where, what, what are, how do we solve this problem? And what are we supposed to do in higher ed to, to solve this? So first of all, getting uh, students to like you is important. We have to acknowledge that that's important. Research shows it's important and it gives faculty uh, feedback in how they're teaching and what they can do to get students to like them better. But what we need to do, what the most important factor for every single professor, for every single class needs to be is, what are you, how much are you improving learning? That's what needs to happen. 
How much are you improving? Is learning happening? And how much are you improving it by? That's what you should be rating a professor on. That's what these evaluations of teaching should be looking at. Did the students learn? Unfortunately, they don't look at it at all. We need to find a way to measure it. And that's probably a different for every class and different situations and stuff. But we need to figure out how to measure student learning. That should be what we are evaluating faculty on. The satisfaction part is nice, um, but it really is doesn't tell even close to a full picture or story. It doesn't really tell us too much, whether it just tells us if the students like the professor or not. The students didn't like the professor, we could say, hey, get your students to like you a little better. But hey, the students are learning so much in your class. That's what's most important, right? Um, so just some things to think about there. I, I think that that's really what we need to start focusing on in higher ed is our students learning. Since we've stopped focusing on this. So let's talk about what's happened since we have stopped focusing on student learning and focusing on the satisfaction part. So since faculty have no choice but to get students to like them to keep their jobs, here's what happened. You know what happened? Grades are being inflated significantly. Students can complain. They, their parents can complain if a student gets a B on something. They can come back at you and argue that all kinds of stuff. And a lot of times, even if the faculty's correct, administration will just make them make the change. It's not always up to the faculty to have that kind of say. You know, if someone complains, you have to just kind of bow to their wishes. And that's the way the system has been set up and what's been happening because of it. So we have this great inflation. Professors are just giving students A's. If a new untenured faculty member comes into a university, the best piece of advice you can give them is, hey, give all your students A's because you don't want to keep you want to keep your job right you got to give your students a's to keep your job to make them happy oh and have a pizza party the end of the semester and some fun stuff like that you're golden who cares about student learning it doesn't matter the students don't know they don't really know if they've learned anything they're not qualified to evaluate a course but they are qualified to say whether they liked it or not so we've got that going for us and then what's the bigger scale problems that have been happening because of grade inflation? Now, in society, college is becoming less valuable. It's becoming less valuable because it's not challenging. We're trying to put everyone through and we're trying to give them all A's. And we're not trying to challenge because if you challenge students, you're going to be out the door because students aren't going to like you because it's too difficult. And that's the system we've set up. How do we change it? There are a number of ways, but the biggest thing, start, start grading faculty based on student learning. First change, not as difficult to implement compared to other things that we can implement. And a lot will change just from that one thing. Thank you very much.